Morning. Morning. Right. We're doing a full day of eating. We haven't done one for a while. So this is a full day of eating for maintenance, where if you eat like this, your training can dictate gain or loss. Well, more loss, because then if you up your activities while staying at maintenance, compared to what you measured your maintenance at, then obviously you're gonna start burning calories, which will make you start losing weight. Makes sense? Cool. Now, it's literally the morning, haven't had breakfast yet. I tend to have a fasted morning, we'll explain more about that later, but I just wanna show you a quick little things before we get going. So, Bob's has been up since nine o'clock. I've been up has, since eight, she's been correction. Up, she's been up since eight. She's prepped food, fed the dogs, made muffins, built a shed, cleaned the house, done the laundry, readjusted all the valves on the motorbikes, <laughs> rebuilt the refrigerator, fucking God knows what. <laughs> Whereas I was like, Lex was like, why, why are you so... More, you know when you wake up and only one eye works for at least 10 minutes? His exact words were, <laughs> why are you so violent in the morning? And I was like, I took a pillow off your head. It comes in, because I sleep with a pillow on my head. That's from the uni days, by the way. So if you're at uni now, that's the trick. If fire alarm goes off, pillow on the head. Shoot. Or if a fire alarm goes off, you go and see if there's nah, a fire. what you do is you touch the floor, <laughs> and if it's not warm, there's still time yet. <laughs> So we're gonna go through some tricks and stuff today for you. So I haven't had breakfast yet, but this is already on the, why is this already on the? Butternut squash fries, chips, whatever you wanna call them. So these are little things that she does. Now butternut squash is lower in carb than kind of sweet potato and normal potatoes. So this is a way of volumizing, but not having to have like a, just a salad on the side of your plate. So handy hint, and we haven't even started breakfast yet. So these butternut squash fries, the crinkle cut, don't crinkle cut myself because that would be a pain in the ass. But you can get them in Sainsbury's, Asda, any of the supermarkets. I tend to boil them up first, a little bit, just parboil them until they're a little bit al dente. And then I just put some olive oil, some of this. I'm trying this out. It's the Eat Lean Protein Cheese, and this is the, like, the shaker version of it. And then just onion granules, garlic granules, salt, pepper, and then they go in like that. And then you just put them in the oven and then they all crisp up like proper fries. You can see the cheese is actually melting on them. They are going to be actually delicious. Ta-da! Where's Wally? Where, 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 where's Wally? Where's your man? Plex is currently out in the garage. Even though he has Jay here, he's currently out in the garage putting a battery in his bike. Because Lex does not know how to utilize his time properly. <laughs> he could do the bike tomorrow or the next day, you know, it's a long weekend. But no, that's when he gets fixated on something. That's it, like he's fixated. So he gets fixated on his videos, his photos. And right now it's putting a battery in his bike. I just wish he'd get fixated on doing the laundry, <laughs> yeah. you know, making some food, dog time, maybe emptying the dishwasher. No, no, Emptying no. the kitchen bin when it's no, overflowing. No, no. no. <laughs> no, he has his priorities in order. You see my man toolbox? Jeez. It's a man box. Ignore the fact that I haven't, this still is still shrink wrapped <laughs> and I haven't used any of this bit yet. <laughs> Just edit that out. And edit in Photoshop in some dirt and, yeah. and grime and grease all on that bit, yeah. Um, I went out and did a motor vlog, recorded a motor vlog for you guys. Some of you guys like those, you know, where we just talk about the subject matter and ride along. So one of those is coming your way shortly. I just had to re-record the second part because I was going too quick and it made too much noise. And by too quick, I mean the legal speed limit. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so I yanked this out of the bike, took a good chunk out of my thumb, as per usual, and uh, feel the weight of that. <laughs> it's heavy as shit, yeah, isn't it? Six pounds, these thick little bastards weigh. Anyway, but this has been in there since 2013 like before I even owned the bike. So, probably about time to change the bugger, which is probably why the other day I went to start and it went, no, 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 no. In three swift minutes, I'm gonna have this in there and she will start. Bob the Builder. Can he fix it? No, he can't. Call the AA. <laughs> Five Grey's Knuckles and Amazon delivery later. We have power. There is power. Kill switch on. So, motor vlogs coming your way, so hit me up in the comment section below about subject matter you'd like me to chat about. So anything you think from life to training to whatever, hit it below and if you like a comment that you see, something you want me to talk about, go like that comment, the ones with the most likes will do them. Cool? Sweet. Bye bye. What is this? This is my super secret red drink that a lot of you have been seeing on my Insta stories. If you haven't been on there, follow the Insta stories 
links will be here, so that you can follow the day-to-day -day running. So there's hints and tips that go on there that don't make it onto here, because obviously we can only fit so much in here without it being a four hour long video. But what is this and why do I drink it? Well, I'm gonna show you what goes into it in a second, but first of all, why do I drink it? In my big toes, I started to get pain, and I thought I'd messed them up because I was going back to MMA and doing wrestling, and I thought I'd just jumped in too quickly and messed up the tendons. Um, so I pulled back from doing a lot of the wrestling work and started doing much more of the bag work, but my toes were still hurting. So I'm looking into it a little bit more, and what it turns out that it might be is a buildup of uric acid in the blood. And this is something that people can commonly have that they don't know until they start getting the symptoms. And the symptoms are pain in big toes, elbows, wrists, and sometimes fingers. And these are the, the joints that it can really affect. So if you're finding you're getting inflammation in those areas, this could be your issue. And the reason uric acid increases in the blood and stays high is because we eat high protein diets. And if you're eating certain meats and fish and things that are high in something called purines, purines are found in the body naturally. Mainly two thirds of the purines found in the body are actually created within the body, but a lot of it comes from diet and they come from the breakdown of proteins in animal and plant products. Here's where it gets interesting. The highest levels of purines are found in brewer's yeast, pig's heart, dried flat mushrooms, sardines in oil, tuna in oil. Here's the, the most important bit, chicken breast. Now we all eat chicken breast and if we're on a high protein diet, a lot of us do eat way more protein than we need, which can also mean that the purine level in your bodies go up, which means the breakdown of those creates high uric acid levels. And if you are not hydrating properly, which is what I don't do, I need to be drinking three to four liters of water a day to make sure that I'm clearing out my system. I probably only drink around two, two and a half. So I'm maybe taking in 55% of what I need to be taking in to clear my system of the purines. By drinking the ingredients that I found in this drink, what I'm hopefully gonna do is neutralize the uric acid in the blood, bring those levels down, and as a result, reduce the inflammation in the joints. So this is a simple home remedy that can really help reduce joint pain. This is what's in it. So need half a lemon. So the bit that you're not gonna use, just get yourself a freezer bag, stick it in there, get as much of the air out as possible, zip lock it, and save that for later in the day, around about 200 to 300 ml of water. You need some apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons. So half lemon. Obviously there's gonna be pips in this, so be careful, don't go choking it. Bad idea is just squeezing it. One, it goes everywhere, including your eyeballs. Your tablespoon you use for. Start from the top and work your way down, just putting a little bit of pressure in and kind of scooping left to right. And you can see it also helps get some of the meat of the lemon in there. You can obviously use a, uh, a juicer thing, but it's a pain in the ass to clean them. So this is less cleaning, same amount of juice that you get at the end. If you don't trust yourself to be an adult, just remove the pips, put them in the bin. I accept no responsibility for choking on pips. So the moment, so you can see, hell of a lot of lemon juice in there, even little bits of the lemon, which I really like. If you don't like the pulp, then I would advise using a, a lemon squeezy juicer. I like the pulp, extra pulp. So that's your half lemon, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and last but not least, glucosamine. Now this is for your joints, but let me just set you straight on this. It doesn't help anything to do with kind of ligaments and tendons. So if you f anything up to do with that, bleep that bit, <laughs> child friendly here. This isn't gonna help you with ligaments and tendons. This is more to do with cartilage, and this is prevention rather than cure. So you should be on this if you're doing a lot of extensive training, just to help protect the cartilage in your joints. This is a sour cherry flavor. When you put it in, you'll see, you take a 25 mil shot, and this gives the red drink. It's lovely red color, which is why you can see this appearing all over my Insta stories and asking what the hell it is. So now you know. It does not taste good. So breakfast is now 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I tend to have fasted mornings and don't know why, more it just feels good. I don't like to get up and eat straight away. I tend to like to get up, I'll usually have a tea or some water, hydrate a little bit, get some work done. And I'll start to eat when I feel hungry. There's no real reason that you need to be eating six, seven meals a day, unless you like doing that. If you wanna eat three, two, even one crazy ass big meal a day, technically it shouldn't matter. I'd say eating one meal a day, you're gonna feel pretty turd, but 
you know, two, three meals a day, bigger meals rather than the smaller ones, it's absolutely fine. And that's what we tend to do. I tend to probably end up around about three to four major meals and then kind of snacks throughout the rest of the day to fill up the macros. But today we're starting with my standard. This is the fruit. The basis of this is the this Kvag yogurt. This is my protein kick. Protein on this per pot, it's a 150 gram pot serving. It is a quark based yogurt. 17 grams of protein, but only five grams of carbohydrate. So if you're on a higher fat diet, these are a really great snack to have in your fridge. Do be aware though, they taste great because they do have sweetener in them. So if you're going to eat these, make sure that you're taking out sweetener from other parts of your diet, because having too much of that in there is not good. 100 grams of strawberry, 100 grams of blueberries, 70 grams of raspberries. Back up to me. The reason we go with the berries is they tend to be around five to seven grams of carbohydrate per 100 grams of serving. So they're a very good tool for volumizing. They taste great. You get a lot for little impact. Now this is going to total out at 35 grams of protein, 36 grams of carbohydrate, and one gram of fat. Now that's perfect because we're going to go training next and I want to get some carbs in. I'm also actually going to add on is two slices of the high protein Dr. Zach's bread, which will then in turn add on an extra 30 grams of carbohydrate because I want to get my carbs in around my training. So this is going to help boost my carb level. It takes me to that 60 to 80 that I like to have prior to training. But we're also going to add in a little sneaky treat later on. I'll get to that in a minute. But this is also going to tap into a little bit of extra protein for the day. In two sides of this, I get 30 grams of protein and then five grams of fat. Now, if I wasn't going to go training, what I would tend to do is have a higher fat breakfast rather than a higher carb breakfast. Because when I'm sat around, I don't want carbohydrates in my system doing nothing. So if you have your breakfast away from training, have something higher fat. So go for things like whole egg scrambled eggs um, with maybe some bacon or something like that and keep the fats high and the carbs lower. Makes sense? Should do. So I've got to mention what I'm going to be putting on the toast. I'm actually going to be putting on some of this spreadable protein cheese we got in the other day, which is quite impressive. I'm also going to use this, which is a standard one, reduced sugar jam. So this isn't jam with sweet or anything like that. It's just it's got no added sugar in there, which makes it half the sugar of normal jam. And all I'm going to put on is around about seven grams of this, which in total gives me literally like two, three grams of carbohydrate on top of there. Then a spread of this, I'm going to put 10 grams of this on it, which will give me half a gram of fat. 0.6 grams of fat, so we're not even carving that. 0.4 grams of carbohydrate, but protein-wise, it'll be 1.7 protein. So it's just an inoffensive spread that I can put on there that tastes good. And if you're a little bit weird, you can probably put the jam on the cheese spread. I know some people do that. A bunch of weirdos. So there you have it. So that's my breakfast. This is exactly what you kind of want before going training. You want those simple impact carbs that you're going to utilize as soon as you hit the gym. So today we're going to be training some chest, triceps, and abs. Um, today's focus obviously on food, but part of that is supplements and what we use. Don't use a ton of them, but for the pre-workout, I do like a little bit of the PSI from EHP Labs. The reason I'm using this today, it's about pump and vasodilation. There's no caffeine in here, no stimulants. I would rather have a black coffee earlier in the day alongside this rather than use up my caffeine content on a pre-workout that I don't need earlier in the day because I am awake. Two scoops of the custom, custom bent hotel stolen spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in some nice ice cold water. I also like to have alongside a good vitamin that has a high level of B12 in it. The B vitamins will wake your ass up and give you energy. Then, no, that doesn't fit on that. Then we screw this, we tap it down, and then we release the Kraken piss. We also can add in a sneaky little treat. And this is when you do it, before the gym. When you're going and you want something a little bit naughty, this is when you have it, because your body's just gonna be like <laughs> and utilize it. As long as it fits your macros, you can have it. And this is what I'm going for. So we're on route to the gym, but prior to that, we're pulling up at the Golden Arches. Dun, 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 dun. So people think that you can't be in shape and eat fast food or ice cream or all these things. If you do macros, you should be aware that you can fit fun things into your diet whenever you want them. But I think there's a sensible way of doing it and that is in terms of putting it in around and about the time where your body is going to utilize it. When you go training, your body is getting ready to utilize anything in the system at that point. Fats, carbs, protein, nah, not so much, but the fats and the carbs. They're gonna help fuel you through your workouts and having like a little treats or things before you go to the gym, not only fills your body with fuel, 
but it gives you a positive mentality. You, you feel good because you've had some little cheeky treats. But there's no reason you can't have these all the time if you want it, just not advised. Because processed food doesn't have the micronutrients in it. So in terms of health and things like that, it's uh, it's not the best because it doesn't have the micronutrients in it. But as long as you're making those up in the rest of your diet, you're fine. So enjoying an ice cream, enjoy a bit of a McDonald's. You still do it every day. So the deed has been done. Just to prove it, is for they don't do it, they just order it and then they don't eat it. <laughs> Double cheeseburger for you, sir. Thank you very much. There you go. And for me. Now, what I would advise is at least giving yourself about 15, 20 minutes after eating this before hitting the gym. All the <laughs> smell, all the smell. Ah! Oh. Mm. That's so good. It's gonna increase your vascularity and the simple carbs and everything in this. Body's gonna be able to use them. Bang, 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 bang. So, enjoy it and get the benefits. 23 grams of fat, 32 carbs, 26 protein. Kind of ideal pre-workout you wouldn't even need anything. So say you were, you'd had all your breakfast and everything like that and you were going to the gym, you could literally smack this in before the gym. Go train with your pre-workout. Then when you come out, you want to have something wholesome, slower burn, low, like uh, low GI carbs, good protein content. And then go back to your normal, this day, healthy, non-processed, good food. And that way you're fitting in the fun, but keeping the health. I need a moment alone. Mm. So obviously I said before that I like to have a moderate bit of fat and a higher impact of carbs before workouts and that's true but I wanted to just show you something today a little bit more extreme just to show you it can be done and you don't need to worry too much about your food as long as you're monitoring it. So that's why I had that double cheeseburger, something a little bit extreme. It wouldn't be what I have every day. If I was going to have that, I would have that on its own away from the breakfast. What I want to show is that right now, look, we're kind of flat, there's not a lot of veins or vascularity going on. Uh, still half decent, but I want to show you now between when that kicks in, once we get the blood flowing and that pre-workout kicks in, how the body can change. I'll show you a little bit of a physique update and also I'll cut back in in between if I come up with any little hints and tips because we're going to be doing chest, triceps, some carbs and some abs today. So if I think of anything good to choose with you, we're going to hit a montage with some information in between if I think of some. So montage in three, two, one. So here's a quick one for you, and it's a simple one that I don't think you'll see a lot of people doing. So we're doing incline dumbbell press, but we're doing it with a hammer grip. That's not the weird thing. What I tend to do on this is, when I'm holding the dumbbell, I deliberately tip the head closest to me in towards my chest, elevating that back head. <clears throat> Instead of being here, like most people would hold it, I'm tilting it up, there. And what that's doing, especially at the base, is taking the stress off the shoulder, keeping that load on the chest, then I'm driving up through my palm, keeping that head tilted, so we keep the load right here. This is especially important if you find that on that negative at the base, you're getting a real tension on the shoulders and it's stretching over. You can also implement this on a flat bench, by instead of holding the dumbbells flat and letting them do what's natural, which will be to tilt outwards, is to let that inner head just sit in ever so slightly. But you'll only be moving it about an inch or half an inch, but it will make the world a difference. Let's go. Okay, so I said I'm going to give you a quick physique update. I want to look, there is no down lighting. This is natural daylight. You saw what we came in like, but with those carbs, those fats, and a little bit of a pre-workout pump. And you can see.
you start to get veins, lines. Ah, that's no trick lighting. This is just the food, the pump, the pre-workouts. And you can see in the gym, we look like different animals. But that's good, because we always want to be chasing that reflection. Woo! So fuck these critics and labels, cause only fans will get me. You hit your limit, the minutes, cause all you had was in me. Yeah, understand it, and I listen, baby, so I be friendly. This is my time in the kitchen, baby, so I'll be deadly. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be deadly. No need for nervousness, nah, I'm a monster deadly. This is my purpose, bitch, uh -huh. Okay, so there's tricep ones. I'm going to talk you through these. They're a little bit confusing to look at. What you're seeing on that rotation is you're seeing me come from a, kind of an over grip like this. And as I'm coming up, I'm rolling the hand over and then extending. But there's two things you need to know. One, you're not extending above the face. You're keeping an angle on the arm. This is kind of a soul crusher. A lot of people will start it up here, straight line. What we want is an angle. And this is going to keep the load on the tricep. So we're coming back to this angle every single time. You can do this with the bar or with the dumbbells. We're going to bend at the elbow. We're going to rotate around and bring that to an overhand grip. Kind of an overhand, it's weird. But you can see what I'm saying. Then as soon as we start to move, the elbows stay in a fixed position. We drive up and back up to that angle and then palms to the ceiling. The reason I'm doing that is you've got three heads to the tricep and I can't think of the freaking names of them right now because I'm high on McDonald's and blood sugar levels and all the sugars in the muscle. None in the brain. So we have the long, the short, and I'm gonna call it medial. It's probably got a different name. But what we're working here is we're working the big slab of muscle that runs between the two pieces that you see all the time. So you see the long head and the short head, but there's a piece under here that runs, and that gives you the thickness and depth on the arm. And by working that rotation, what we're doing is we're helping to work more than just a single head of the tricep. So give this a go, it's a light exercise. The elbow has to stay fixed. If you move this elbow back and forth, you're gonna lose that tension. So angle on the arm, rotate, around as you come up, palms to the ceiling, and drive through the elbows. You should feel this, really burn. Second, third set, those reps will come down even with 10 kilos, you'll be struggling to get eight. If you're getting more than that, you're swinging through. Slow it down, control it. How the fuck do I feel? God damn it, I'm insane. No, it's a moment to blow, cause we plan this all day. If you get chosen, then get focused in on you on land. This isn't coaching, no ocean, we go. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get that in every single YouTube video, do you? <laughs> the Muppet on a pole. Trying to scare it out with a fraggle on a stick. What's over there? Is it two? Is it two now? Is it two? humans outwitted by two pigeons very easily. So there you go, that's a little bit of a session there for you to look at. Hopefully it's giving you some ideas to be able to work the muscle. I mean, literally our triceps, how they were like bricks, weren't Pumped. they? I've they got were to hold this camera. swollen like lactating bosoms. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's not all about weight, it's about contraction, angles, maintaining load. There's so much more to lifting than just A to B. So hopefully that will give you some insight into how I think and some little things you can tweak and do for yourself. Now, we're having a whey shake. This is gonna have 28 grams of protein in it, uh, literally two carbs and point something fast. We're not even gonna include it. The reason I'm having it at the gym is one time concept. We've been here a while filming now. I wanna get something in. I'm starting to feel a little bit like I'm drained. But two, support your local gyms when you go in there. It costs a lot of money to run a gym. You know, and, and a lot of people, especially in local gyms, they work hard to give you a good environment to be in. So support them. Every so often, go and buy a protein shake, go and buy some fruit, buy a pre-workout from there. And just, you know, show a little bit of love. Put love into the world, love will come back to you. And now we're gonna head back to the house. Ha! And we're home. So a couple of things here when I get back. Remember I told you about not eating four, five, six times a day? Yep, well I like to put big meals around my workouts. So that means fueling up before I come into the gym and fueling up once I've left the gym. Because obviously you've burned that glycogen that you had in your system, you've used those carbs, those fats are run through and we wanna start replenishing, we wanna get energy back. Otherwise you're gonna slump and slowly depress as the day goes on. Fast acting carbs straight back into my system that I'm gonna go for now, cereal. Cause I freaking love cereal. Rice Krispies, 30 grams. 
Fruit and fiber, which has raisins in it again, which is super fast acting, and it has dried banana in there, little flakes of almonds. And this is just a standard fruit and fiber that you can find at pretty much any supermarket, and they're all pretty much a standard. We're gonna go for 50 grams of that serving. We're gonna add on a standard whole banana, chop that in on the top, and then we have a best of both milk. So this is a semi-skimmed tasting milk with almost skimmed macros. So I'm gonna add around about 150 to 180, depending on how much it requires, but per 100 mil, the carbs are five, but the fat's 0.4. So that's better than semi-skimmed, a little bit higher than skimmed, but you get that kind of creamier taste to it. So that's the kind of things that I'll add to my tea and cereal. That's gonna be eaten whilst microwavable rice. This is convenient and it is relatively cheap. We've got a tilde sun-dried tomato rice, gonna have 125 grams of this. That is 30 grams of carbohydrate, around about three grams of fat and three and a half protein. Don't have to get tilde. Buy the supermarket's own brand if it's cheaper and you can buy like, you get like five for X amount of money or whatever. They're usually handy, convenient, quick and easy. And you're more likely to make rice and eat this kind of rice than if you have to get it from the grain, boil it, put it on the thing. And when the thing is, is when you have something that's a little bit awkward and you're feeling lazy, that's when you tend to go to like the, the, sh the crappier stuff. Having something that's a bit more wholesome but easy to prepare is always a benefit. Then alongside that, chicken. If they ever rise up against humans, I am buggered. But I do love a good chicken breast. One thing I do want to say, so these are vacuum packed from Muscle Food. Each one gives 44 grams of protein because we know it's 200 grams. You will often see 200 grams of, pro of chicken breast from one place cheaper than 200 grams of chicken breast from somewhere like say maybe Muscle Food. Although saying that, I think Muscle Food are pretty competitive to supermarket prices. But the supermarket version is often pumped full of water. So this 200 grams of chicken breast will cook down to like 190 grams. The supermarket 200 grams of chicken breast will cook down and it'll weigh like 140 to 150. So you're actually getting less value for money from the one that seems cheaper. So just be careful on that front. I would advise buying your chicken breasts from a specialist meat producer or your local butchers rather than the supermarkets because it tends to be pretty shitty. That's what I like to do. I have a big feed, some of it quick, some of it slow, all of it satisfying. So the sun is out, boobies out. It's just too nice not to. I want to just cover the quick thing. Barbecue seasoning is what we're going to be using on these chicken breasts. I hate touching chicken breasts, but I'm going to do it for you, for the tube. I don't even count this. Seasonings, I don't really count them. You'd have to put a buttload on for it to really affect your macros. But what you want to do is put it on before the barbecue, get more than you think that you need. Flip them over, other side as well. A lot of people will look at seasonings and they go and look at the sodium levels of them and they think, oh, it's high in sodium, I can't possibly have that. Your body regulates. If you drink enough water, it doesn't matter how much sodium you're taking because you will flush it out. So don't be afraid, sodium content, it's a big myth. You actually need salts in there to stop cramping and it actually helps you look more vascular and fuller. That's why people when they do a show always look better the day after because they've gone out and eaten and had salt and water and fluids and food. Um, but we're going for the gas one today because it's quick and it's easy. Rice in the microwave, four minutes, ting ting, chop chop, eat eat. And it's that simple and then just literally enjoy the sunshine in England before the rest of Europe steals it away again. Yuck. Ooh, slippy little maggots. That is a fair old chicken breast, isn't it? What are you barking at? It's a bush. There's nothing there. Hey? What are you barking at? What are you barking at? What are you barking at? They're fucking... <laughs> There's something there, I tell you. There have to be biscuits. So there we go. A man meal. Barbecue chicken. Sun-dried tomato rice. 44 grams of protein down the hatch, 30 grams of carbohydrate, sun is shining, and then we'll crack on with the rest of the macros. I hope you enjoyed this. So it's now six o'clock. I'm gonna finish up with Jay. We're gonna go and do a clothing haul for a new Gymshark release. So that's priority, because I can vlog the rest of this day. But a macro roundup for the point right now, I'm currently at 230 carbs, 40 fats, and 184 protein. And what I'm gonna go for today, because this is kind of an example of my maintenance to kind of cutting. The reason I say that is because if I have a low activity like don't do cardio, don't do my bag work and things like that, then obviously my calorie requirements come down. So then that means that what I'm gonna to eat today would really work as quite a maintenance thing. But if I was to add cardio in on top, then this would be suitable 
for going into a cutting phase for the start of a cutting phase obviously as you go along you'd have to take food down as you hit stall points and things like that but i will be aiming for an extra 40 grams of fat so taking our fats to 80 over the day carbs will go to 250 so that leaves me 20 grams of carbs left and protein only needs to be 200. It doesn't need to be 250 or anything crazy. If you're getting between 180 protein and say 210, you're absolutely fine. It is less essential than you may think. As long as you get no 180, you're pretty much covered. The reason we bulk it up as we go through diet phases is because it's satiating. Plus it can help a little bit with maybe a thermogenic digestion, can help you burn a few more calories, maybe, but you're picking at straws there really. Totals of the day will be 200 protein, 80 fat, and 250 carbs. So I'll show you what I'm going to eat to fill my extra 20 carbs, 40 fat and 15 protein after we are done filming that haul. So if you missed it, <laughs> it's up. Go watch it. It'll help you with the sizing for the Onyx stuff. A piece out. So topping it up, final meal of the day, I have myself three whole eggs. I've got myself 45 grams of smoked salmon. That's just the ones that you buy in the pre-pack, so no cooking required on there. Eggs are cooked in the microwave. I find a little bit better in the microwave because they maintain more of the water. So it doesn't get cooked off as much. They tend to be a little bit moister. You have to make sure to take them out every 30 to 45 seconds. It takes about two minutes in total, but stir them every 30 to 45 seconds to stop them turning into an omelette. Alongside that, as a little dessert, as a treat, because I like them, I'm gonna have 30 grams of this Meridian Crunchy Peanut Butter. So this is your kind of organic option for peanut butters, but obviously, if you're looking for cost-effective value, simply go for a supermarket crunchy or smooth peanut butter. Absolutely fine, just be aware they tend to have a little bit more salt in them, a little bit more sugars, a little bit more palm oil and things like that. Whereas this is your more natural alternative. Alongside that, dark chocolate covered rice cakes. So. A little bit of a thing because I have a sweet tooth but the dark chocolate is good for anti-fatigue as well so high cocoa levels are good for anti-fatigue so they're also very good for pre-workout but because of dark chocolate they also help curb that craving for your sweet tooth because they're very very rich so very satisfying I'm gonna spread the peanut butter on top of one of those each 15 grams on top of each nom, 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 nom. So there you have it, that was a full day of eating for maintenance if my activity levels are low, but perfect to start a cut if I want to start adding in consistent activities such as boxing, sprints, cardio of your choice. I hope it's given you a little bit of an idea uh, alongside the training theories, uh, a couple of those training techniques. And away from food, if you feel like testing yourself, having a little bit of fun in the gym, make sure to check out a thousand rep video that I did with Zach Perna, Doug, Sensor, Martin, and Uzoma Obelor. See if you can beat our time. Link in description. Plus you've seen I fit in foods which technically wouldn't be allowed on kind of bro diets and things like that. Not advocating that you should eat fast food and things like that all the time, but I just wanted to make a point that you can fit them in, hit your numbers and still look good doing so. So it means you can have a life outside of the gym, socialize with friends, go out, eat, be merry, have fun and live life. Total macros for the end of the day after this will be 255 carbohydrates, 78 fats, 223 protein. So more protein than anticipated, but I always try and hit between kind of that two to 220 anyway. So it's within my ranges. And don't forget that you can have a little bit of boundaries and ranges to play with until you get really dialed in or have a real set focus that you need to hit. But when you're at maintenance or you're just coming into the diets, give yourself those kind of little buffer zones. Don't worry too much about a gram here or there. It's consistency over time. All those little things all add up to one big win. So that's it for this one. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the comments below. Make sure to hit that notification bell because on YouTube are still not letting people know that I'm uploading. But hey ho, we will grind through. Thank you all for the support in the meantime. It's been absolutely awesome. Lots more coming your way. Stay tuned. Three videos a week, every week. Crewcast on a Monday. I will catch you in the next one. So for me, a weird little pug. Yep, that's you. We're out. <laughs>